Hello, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at the next addressing mode supported by the MSP430, which is called symbolic mode. Uh, <clears throat> symbolic mode will takes basically, if you remember absolute mode, absolute mode is where you are able to access information in memory by providing the address of the memory location that you wanted to access. And you could use that in the source and the destination. The only problem was that you had to keep track of the actual address. You had to, as a programmer, you had to be knowing, you had to know data memory starts at 2000. And if I'm going to put something at 2000, if it's a 16 bit constant, then the next available location would be 2002. And it was, it's actually, it's almost impossible to do that once you start developing large programs. Uh, so symbolic mode gets around that by allowing you to use, instead of the absolute address, you use the address label. And then that way, the assembler actually can keep track of where things are in memory. And you just have to keep track of what the name of the label is. Okay, so uh, it works the exact same way as absolute, except you just use <laughs> the address label and the syntax for it actually is is nothing you you know in absolute you had to put the ampersand uh in symbolic you just put the address label and so that's that's all you do this it's actually relatively simple you can use this in uh both the source and the destination so that's nice and let's do an example so let's do the exact same example that we did last time uh except instead of <clears throat> instead of using the address we'll use a label so we're gonna set up the same memory allocation. Uh, we're gonna put one, two, three, four uh, at address 2000. We're gonna put cafe at 2002, and we're gonna copy it. We'll write a program to copy one, two, three, four into address 2004, and then we'll do another instruction to copy cafe into address location 2006. But we're gonna use the address labels. So we're gonna set it up just like last time using directives, and we'll download these two constants into data memory. We'll reserve these two locations in memory using a directive called dot space. And then we will just use the labels in order to do the copy, okay? So that's our activity. So let's go ahead and fire up CCS. And what we're gonna do is we will do file new CCS project, and then we will name it our standard naming convention, which is going to be a ASM underscore ADDR mode four this is the fourth addressing mode supported. And this is going to be called symbolic. Remember, check your MCU. Got it. Got the right one. I go ahead and do fire it up. And then what happens is that it gives us our empty main file here and then we are ready to go. So let's first go down and let's set up the memory. So let me get the, the picture of what we're trying to do here. So this right here is what we're trying to do. <clears throat> so we want these two values in there and these two are gonna be blank. That's what it'll be like afterwards. So I'm gonna come down here and actually let's let's do our main, main label and then we'll do our uh, jump main so we know where our program is going to be going and then I'm going to go ahead and copy this little constant or excuse me comment header and I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make it clear that I'm doing memory allocation okay come down here and now it's time to use directives to set up data memory and to, I do dot data and this is going to go to data memory and that's it address 2000 I just know that I'm going to do dot retain which means even though this program doesn't access the outside world, please don't optimize out everything I'm doing because I'm just trying to learn. So I'm just say keep this section and then we're ready. So now I'm gonna put an address label called const one and I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna do dot short, which is the directive to create a 16 bit constant. And I'm gonna do one, two, three, four hex. And then I'm gonna do const two and I'm gonna do dot short, which sets up a 16 bit con constant and I'm gonna do cafe, but remember, if it starts with a letter, you gotta put a zero in front of it. Okay, so I have now, I'm when I download, it will download those two things. And now we're gonna reserve some information. So I'm gonna uh, say var one, and I do dot space, and dot space uses, how, it asks you how many bytes, and I want two bytes, and then I'm gonna do var two, I'll do dot space, 
and I'll do two bytes. <clears throat> okay, so these directives right here will set up my memory where I have one, two, three, four at this address and cafe at this address, and then I have these two are blank, and I have address labels more importantly. So I don't have to actually keep track of the absolute 2002, 2004. Okay, so now I come up here and I wanna write some code to copy. So let's do it just like last time where I move it into the register <clears throat> because it shows you how to mix and match addressing modes. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go move.w and now I actually put the address label. <clears throat> so in symbolic addressing, I can just put const one and I don't use the semicolon or the colon and let's move it into R4. Okay, so that's gonna copy contents into R4 and copy <laughs> contents of const one label into R4. So that's a good one. Okay, and then I can do move.w and I can do R4 into var one. That's all I do. So uh, that's, I did it. I'm gonna go out to address label const, go into it, grab one, two, three, four, put it into R4. Then I'm gonna take R4 and I'm gonna go out, put it into the address of label var one. All right, that's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and do this now. So I'm gonna do move.w and I'm gonna go const two into R5 this time. And then let's do move.wr5 into var two. So look at what I'm doing. I'm able to use the, the labels. I don't have any syntax in front of it. I just slap these down and it uses them as basically as the absolute address, uh, but behind the scenes, we don't have to worry about it. And then I'm gonna do copy contents of const two label into R5. And then if I wanna be, this will be copy R5 into R1. Okay, that makes sense. So copy R5 into bar two, and of course that was bar four. All right, all right, let's see what happens. Uh, go ahead and we will get all this on the same on the screen here. So I'm gonna save it, go ahead and hit debug. We'll to see if we got any errors in here. Looks like it's working. So it's gonna go ahead and assemble it, link it, create the executable object file and it downloads it. And now I'm sitting here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I've got my memory browser over here. I've got my register viewer here. I can see R4 and R5. And what I wanna do is come down here, set a breakpoint at the first instruction, and then I'm going to run to it. So I run, and now I stop right there. Memory browser, let's go look at 0x2000. And once again, it has downloaded 1234 and cafe at the beginning of data memory. So it pops them in there <clears throat> back to back. And now let's watch R4 and R5 as I step this. So I step it and look at what happened. R4 one, got one, two, three, four. So it copied the information at address 2000 and it put it into R4, but I didn't have to keep track of address 2000. I was able to allow the address labels to do the work for me. So I didn't care about the address. And then this one's even more important because I had to like, in absolute addressing, I had to know that this next reserved space was address 2004. In here, I don't care about that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit the step button and look what happens. It copied the contents of R4 into address 2004 and I didn't need to keep track of the address. If I step again, I notice that cafe came into R5. I copied the contents of address 2002 into R5, but I didn't have to keep track of the addresses. And then I go ahead and step it again and it copied the contents of R5 into address 2006 and it did it for me okay life is good right it, and it's awesome because symbolic i don't need to use the absolute addresses once again though let's do this uh, i'm going to stop that debug session i can actually just do this i can come up here and say you know what i'm just going to go const one to bar one and then i'm going to go const two to bar two <clears throat> and this allows me to do the exact same functionality but moving directly from memory to memory without actually going into a CPU register. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so I got my breakpoint is still down there. I look at my memory. When it downloaded again, it went ahead and downloaded one, two, three, four and cafe to the beginning of data memory, which is 2000 and 2002. 
and it reserved 2004 and 2006 for me. Uh, those, that was the space directive. And I still have my breakpoint. So I run to that. And now here I'm going to go. I'm going to hit step. And look at what happened. It copied from 2000 to 2004. And then I hit it again. And it copies CAFE from 2002 to 2006. All without having to keep track of the actual addresses. So it did it. So that is symbolic addressing. Okay, now symbolic addressing, remember, it works in both the source and the destination, and it is usually the one we're going to use most often. Okay, that's it. Nice work. Go ahead and uh, remember to subscribe to my channel and see ya.